All right, so today we're going to do Photoshop in Lesson 9, Advanced Composting. Um, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to apply and edit smart filters, use the liquify filter to distort an image, apply color effects uh, to selected areas of an image, apply filters to create various effects, use the history panel to return to a previous state, and upscale a low resolution image for high resolution printing. So uh, if you look in Schoology, you are going to see uh, this is what the final product is going to look like. Um, and this right here is our rubric. And then um, in the Photoshop Lesson 9 Advanced Composting Resources folders, um, we have these three files you need to download in to the download folder. And then in your download folder, you need to create a folder called Monster Makeup. And then save all these files into that folder. Um, once you have that done, then we are going to go to Creative Cloud. Open up our Photoshop. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to file and we're going to go browse and bridge. Uh, once you go to browse and bridge, uh, you're probably going to have to navigate over here to your um, download folder, whether in favorites or in folders, and then find the folder that you created called monster makeup and then select all those files that are in there. You're going to then go to Tools, Photoshop, and then Load Files into Photoshop Layers. So basically what this is going to do is going to take all those files and put it into one Photoshop file for you. Um, otherwise, you'd have to open them all up and drag them all over into one consolidated file. And this just does it for you, and it makes it a lot easier. So uh, while this is loading... I'm going to look through, and we should be almost there. All right. It looks like it's all of them. All right. So the very first thing, now that we have everything loaded, is we are going to go ahead and save our file to our cloud documents. And... We can save it to 09 working and then your name. So we'll go save. Now that's saved in our cloud. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is if you hit control zero, it'll center your canvas on your screen. And then we're going to uh, reorder our layers. Um, if you haven't done it already, uh, we should switch from the last lesson. Uh, if you go to your workspace here, uh, you, you are probably on graphic and web. You should go back to essentials. Um, or you can go to window, workspace, and essentials. But in our layers panel, uh, we're going to want to rearrange all our layers. Um, first thing we should do is drag Franken all the way to the bottom. Drag that layer down there and then drag the monster hair to the top. All right, so it should be monster hair, bolts, enhanced green forehead, green ear staples, green neck stitches, green nose stitches, and then green skin texture. That's the order the layers should be in. And then we're going to want to select all these uh, monster skin layers, all the ones that are in red. Um, you can just click on one, hold shift, click on the top one, and it'll select them all. And then we're going to go and free transform these. So if you go control T, 
It'll give you the ability to free transform. And if you go up here to width and height, we're going to change that to 50%. Uh, you want to make sure that it's linked. That way it does both of them for you. And then just change that to 50 and it'll drop them down. Hit the check mark to confirm and you're good to go. All right. We're going to hide all these layers except for the green skin texture. Uh, we're going to click on our Franken layer and let's move this guy down here towards the bottom. Right about there. And then grab our green skin texture. And with our move tool selected, we're going to want to move it over on top of their, our guy's face. And then you can transform it and see if you can make it fit his head a little bit better. Make sure you get his eyes lined up. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to help get it a little bit better. There we go. Confirm. And then if you go to edit transform and then warp it'll give you the ability to like warp his face and line it up a little bit better you can also zoom in if it helps there we go that looks pretty good hit the check mark to can commit all right, and now we're going to use a smart filter. Uh, smart filters are non-destructive, so uh, they can be adjusted. They can be turned on and off, deleted, and it won't mess with um, the image that we were transforming. So like um, the green skin texture, if we turn off the smart filter, um, everything that we did to it, it'll just go back to normal. So uh, it's basically like no harm, no foul. So, in order to make this a smart object, uh, we're going to go to filter and then convert smart filter. So, go up here to the top filter, convert for smart filters, and it's going to give you this little warning to enable re-editable smart filters, the selected layer will be converted into a smart object. Got it. Thank you. As you can see, it's not red anymore. And then we're going to go to filter and then liquify right there. And we're going to want to make sure if this if it pops up with the face aware liquify open like this you can just go ahead and hit that arrow and close it uh you're going to want to change your opacity to somewhere around 75 just so you can see the guy behind it if you can't get 75 you can just type it in and we're going to zoom in so we can see really well And we're going to use the forward warp tool, which is the top one right here. Looks like the little smudge finger. And you can adjust the eye sockets so they go around the eyes a little bit better. That looks pretty good. Um... You can set the size to 150 and then the pressure to 75 and try that out. It'll give you just a little bit different feel. Uh, do it a little bit on the eyebrows. Looks good. Once you're satisfied with that, you can go ahead and hit OK. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the green nose stitches visible. 
we're going to grab those bad boys and move them over here. And you're going to want to transform them so they can fit a little bit. So uh, you see how if I grab a corner and move it, it moves it all uniform. Um, if you come up here and uncheck this link, then it'll definitely change it a lot differently. So whichever way you need to do it to make it fit the best, that's what you're going to want to do. And once you get it in position, you can go ahead and say done or commit. And then we're going to do the green neck stitches next. And we'll do the same thing with that. Make sure that it gets on there nice and neat and fits in there good. All right. And then we're going to do the green ear staple. Put that over here on this side. All right. And then commit. And then the enhanced green forehead. I need to move up a little bit. This thing is really kind of wonky, so we need to adjust it so it fits his head properly. Might have to use the arrows. All right. And then the bolts, we'll do the bolts next. For the bolts, I like to, let's see, control T. Those, I like to keep it length just so it doesn't skew the bolts really bad, make them look all wonky. Beautiful. All right, and we're going to do the monster hair. And commit. Looks great. All right, so let's go ahead and save what we have right there. All right, the next thing we're going to do is editing a smart filter. So um, in our layers panel, if we go to our smart right, filter right here, liquify, go ahead and double click on that. It's going to open this back up. And uh, we're going to zoom in on the eyes. And we're going to adjust this a little bit. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is use the pucker tool. Um, you can see here when you click on it, it's going to pucker it a little bit. If you go in too far, um, you can hit the bloat tool and then bring it back out. And you can pucker it back in to wherever you're, you feel like is the best. Sometimes you may have to say, okay, and I can come out and look and go, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Or you might have to go back in and uh, readjust it a little bit. Um, another way to save is you can hit Control S. That'll save it real quick for you. Uh, that way you don't have to like go all the way up here and go to save. Um, also, if you see it grayed out, that means that the cloud saved it for you. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint a layer. Um, so we're going to select the Franken layer and then we're going to go to um, down at the bottom of our panel and create a new layer right above that. And then it named it named it layer one for us. We're going to take this layer and we're going to change it to color. Color. All right. 
And then we're going to go to our tools panel and pick the paintbrush tool. Uh, you want to have it at like 60 pixels and a hardness of zero. All right. So uh, the next thing we need to do is take our eyedropper tool and click on some green part of the body, uh, like the forehead, uh, whatever color green you want. You can look up here and see what it looks like. Uh, whichever one you're the happiest with. I wanna, uh, there we go. That color green right there. All right. So down here in your pan layers panel again on the Franken um, PS or Franken layer, are you going to hold the control button and you're going to click on this thumbnail? See how the little box showed up when I clicked the control button? Then you're going to click on that and it will select your little dude there. So now what we want to do is go back to our paintbrush and paint all of his skin that is not green. So you can just paint around his thumb and his wrist and whatnot. Paint it all green. You don't have to worry about going out of the lines up here because um, it's selected. It won't go outside of there. It will, however, paint on the shirt. So make sure you don't get any on the shirt as much as possible. All right, his hands look good. I'm going to paint the rest of his skin on here. Move this bad boy out of the way. All right. That looks good. Get his eyes in there nice and green. All right. So once you're happy, you can go ahead and hit deselect or control D. And then save your work. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add, add our background and so we should go to, well, actually, before we add our background, um, if you go to this in your layers panel, there's these three little bars right here. If you click on that, you can merge all visible. And we're going to put that all into one layer. That's going to make it easier. And then we're going to go to file and then open. Go to your download folder and grab your backdrop PSD and open that up. It's going to open it up in a new window. Um, then go to window and arrange and tile all vertically so you're going to see you have the backdrop and here's your frankenstein go ahead and grab your move tool grab this dude and drag him over Oop. drag him over and drop him onto this canvas and then we're going to place him Right about there. And we'll move him down so that way the title stays above him. Let's see. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. And then... All right. We can go ahead and close out this file. And we just have our backdrop. Let's go ahead and save this. So this time, let's go ahead and save as in our cloud documents. And we'll call it movie-poster-frank. Save it. All right. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to take a quick look at the history panel. So if you look at your history panel, it's this one up here. Um, it gives you the ability, like undo is control Z, and then control shift D is re redo. Um, this just lets you do, oh, I can click here and undo the layer. I can undo the move, undo drag, undo open, or I can just go back to where I was. Uh, it lets you do a lot of different things in the history panel rather than just clicking undo a million times. Um, all right. So next thing we're going to do is work on applying filters and effects. So let's go to file and then go to open and then go to your download folder and open up the T1 PSD. All right. We have this tombstone. And we're going to put some filters on it. So uh, first thing we want to do is reset our default and background um, colors. Right now they're green and white. You can click on this little black and white icon right here, which will put it back to black and white. Or if, uh, let's say, you had your colors, you can just let, hit the letter D and it'll do it also. So either way. All right, now that that's reset, um, let's go to filter. Oops, we gotta select our layer. Go to filter, and then we're gonna go to render, and then we're gonna choose difference clouds. So put those clouds on our um, tombstone there. And then that looks pretty cool. Now, let's go to Filter, and then Blur Gallery, and then do Iris Blur. So, wherever I put the center point, that's going to be the focus, and it's going to blur everything around it. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, we can hit OK up here at the top for that. And then you can do some uh, different adjustments um, like your brightness. If we put that to, I don't know, 70, it's got brightened it up. And we can go to channel mixer right there. And then let's put. Yeah, let's put the green filter on, or output channel. And then we'll put green to plus 37. Now, if you look at the clouds, you'll see how it changes. And then we'll put the blue to 108. You can make it green. That's pretty cool. Um, you can go to exposure. If you put the exposure at 0.90, it'll make it like a little bit brighter. That's pretty cool. But let's take and go to our history. And let's go to our blur gallery. Uh, that's where we were. Oops. Go to our blur gallery. We're going to undo to that point. And then, matter of fact, let's go to difference clouds. And we'll use that. Uh, we're going to go to filter again. And then we're going to go to noise. And let's add noise. Noise just makes it all kind of like speckled and kind of like an old TV set. Uh, we're going to put it at 3%. Like if we were to go 100%, see how it gets all noisy? You can go to 3%. And make sure it's on Gaussian. And then we will go OK. And then we're going to choose window again and then arrange and then all vertically. We're going to grab that move tool again, uh, grab this tombstone and we're going to drag it over here to our movie poster. Let's position that bad boy right about there. Looks good. Um, 
Let's go ahead and close this out. We're not going to save it. All right. So let's save our movie poster so we don't lose that progress. The next thing and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to improve a low resolution image. So let's go to file. Let's go to open. And we're going to open that faces JPEG. So we're going to open that up. Uh, let's zoom in to about 300%. You can see 300% down there. We're going to choose image, image size, and make sure resample is checked. And we want preserve details for enlargement. And we're going to we're going to change this to 400%. On your preview, if you can grab this, make sure his glasses are shown in there. So if you click on it, see how it got blurry? That's the original photo. And then once we resample it, that's the new photo. So it made it bigger and it kept uh, good quality. We can hit OK. He's all zoomed in. Control zero will put it back to normal. And then what we want to do is we're going to add this to our movie poster. Uh, so we got to go to select and then select all and then go edit copy. So we copied that and let's go to our movie poster, grab this ellipse tool. It's underneath the rectangle marked key tool, the elliptical one and draw you an ellipse right about there. Right. And then go to edit paste special. Oops. We want to do. Make sure we have our background selected. File. Oops. Edit. Paste special. And then place into. If we paste it into, that's going to put it inside there. Right? So that's pretty cool. Um, and let's change this layer to luminosity. And then we're going to change the opacity to 50%. Beautiful. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and save our movie poster. And that's it. Go ahead and save this as uh, a JPEG and a PSD. And then turn it in to the folder. And I will see you in the next video.